Do you know what's really hot on the market right now? Actually, the narrative that was once very popular, now pretty much forgotten, and that will come back in a few months or maybe a couple of years. Dividend investors, bonjour, my name is Mike Yehu. I'm the founder of Dividend Stocks Rocks and I am the host of this YouTube channel where I help you invest with more conviction so you can enjoy your retirement. As everybody is looking into the energy sector and talks about oil and gas and how there's not enough production and the price are going to go up and then we're stuck with oil and gas companies for like a good decade and they're gonna generate so much cash flow. The narrative behind where renewable energy needs to invest even more and will produce a lot more energy and cash flow for decades to come is kind of like gone sideways. So over the past decade, there was a long time where green energy wasn't that popular. So it was a thing that was under development government were paying a lot in subsidies to make it happen and then boom we got a huge surge after the pandemic but you know how it goes on the market when there's a hype there's a drop and then everybody said hey you know what oil and gas is still working so let's move over there um so this is what happened over the past 18 months Renewable energies are still popular, but they went a little bit behind. And today we're going to talk about their bounce back. And I'm going to share with you two of my favorite dividend growers for renewable energy. Actually, it's kind of interesting because I went into my dividend stocks rock screener and we have like we filter over 1,000 stocks, both trading on the US and Canadian market, and it's super easy. I can just pull out some filters, search for utilities with renewable energy, and then I found about like 15 companies. Kind of interesting because a lot of them are Canadians, and a lot of them shows a lot of potential, but they don't grow their dividend. So when you look at Northland Power, TransAlta Renewable, Borelex, Energex and Polaris, they all started well a few years ago by increasing their dividend and growing their business and then boom, nothing happened. From this short list, my favorite one is probably Northland Power, ticker NPI, because all the others have a lot more problems going on. So when you look at um, Transalta Renewable Energy, their sponsor Transalta has gone through so many problems and that, that company never increased its dividend for a long time. So couldn't be on my top dog list. When you look at Borelex and Energex, I kind of like the fact that they're well diversified in terms of geography, but they focus a lot on growth. And that's pretty much a problem around this industry. There's a lot of money to be invested right now in their projects. So there is little room to increase their dividend at the same time. For Polaris, if you like stocks that are like a bit volatile and could pay back well or could crash, this could be interesting. This one is specialized in Central America and South America. Their largest um, infrastructure is owned in uh, Nicaragua. So sometimes a little bit of political problems as well. So for all of those reasons, those companies are not on my top list. Actually, when you look at their debts level, um, it's going up most of the time. So for Transalta Renewable is slightly down. Uh, same thing for Polaris Infrastructure, but all of them has to invest massively in new projects to generate more power as we know there's a big transition going on and let's be honest we're not ready we don't have the infrastructures in renewable energy to say oh all our energy will be green and then we can get rid of oil and gas it's not happening in a second and it's going to take several years to happen and those companies they're part of the solution but for my own portfolio and my perspective i don't think i'm going to ride with potential winner where they can even balance their growth and their dividend at the same time. So I went back to my screener and I took off all the dividend safety score of two or one, meaning that the company hasn't been able to increase their dividend for a while. And then I stick with companies showing a dividend uh, score, a dividend safety score of three or four to do a little bit more research. I found two very interesting renewable stock First one is Atlantica Yield. Um, ticker AY, yield over 5%. 
pro rating of four, dividend safety score of four. So it sounds to be promising for a great start. If you look at the business, the company, what I like is they're operating in North America, South America, and also in Europe. 77% of their revenues are coming from renewable energy. So we can say that it's almost a pure play on energy, on renewable energy. Uh, 15 years of average contract, so very stable. So whenever they build a project, they go see the government and say, hey, I have some green energy, would you like to have some? And then you sign up a contract for a very long time, which will provide a lot of stable cash flow. If you dig a little deeper, what do you see in the business sector is 70% of renewable energy, and then you have efficient natural gas and transmission line. So we're pretty much around energy that people need um, in terms of contract. The other thing that I love on top of the long term contract of 15 years is that they come with escalator contracts. So the escalator clause means that the price of energy will increase. It will likely match the inflation or at least do a part of it. So if you're looking to protect your portfolio against inflation, Companies like utilities will usually um, have those kind of contracts. REITs will also do it as well. So it's a great way to protect your portfolio from this damn inflation. Um, in terms of potential growth, uh, as I mentioned earlier, those are capital intensive businesses. So you can count on a mix of organic growth, development of new projects, and obviously a lot of acquisition. So those companies are spending billions of dollars year after year to generate more cash flow in the future. When you look at those kind of projections, what I like is between five to 8% through 2025. This means for the next three years, you're going to have a decent growth for cash flow, chances are dividend will follow pretty much accordingly. If you look at the dividend triangle, it's a bit hectic, especially if you look at earnings per share for utilities, especially for renewable utilities, it may not be the best way to analyze the stock. I would suggest that you look at the available cash flow for distribution and that will um, give you a pretty better idea of how the dividend will continue to increase. What you can see here is that over the past five years, it has showed a straight line going up all the time. Revenues are going up. So for the overall perspective, Atlantica yield could be very interesting. Keep in mind, it's a yield co. You have to look and make a little bit more research in terms of tax implication for your portfolio. And if you don't want to bother with this point, you can also go with Algonquin Power, ticker AQN, dot to or aqn on the new york stock exchange so it trades on both canadian and new york uh, and u.s stock exchange this utility is atlantica yield sponsor owns about 40 45 percent shares so they this means that they get a very juicy dividend from atlantica yield and aqn is 65 percent utility 35 percent renewable energy so Quite an interesting play here. I've actually done a video on this one as well. So you can click on the video and you'll see um, the full analysis of Algonquin, which is part of my favorite renewable energy stock as well. But I'm not gonna go there today. I'm gonna let watch you the video. And instead, we're gonna move on to a second one, which is quite similar to Algonquin in a sense, because it's not a pure play on the energy sector. It's a mix where you have a regulated utility company that is moving towards renewable energy. And this one is XL Energy, ticker XEL. The yield is a lot smaller, 275, but pro rating of four, dividend safety score of four. So a very, very strong company here. And management expect to increase the dividend by five to 7% per year. So this is more than enough to protect your income from inflation. So even though the yield is a little bit lower, the dividend growth perspective are a lot better. So when you look at their business model, you can see that there's a transition going on. Um, they still have a lot of coal in their portfolio, but they're moving out. Um, their goal is to go 100% clean energy by 2050, uh, which isn't a long time, but what you can see here is they have a lot of electric distribution and transmission by 2026. That will be the bulk of their business model. Model. Not too much coal already at that point, a little bit of natural gas. So there's a 
great mix of various source of revenue. What I really like about Excel Energy is that they are present in several states. And on top of that, those states in terms of geography, they can either be very good for wind power and some others for solar panels. So what they will do going forward is that they are going to invest according to the geography of each segment, each state, and will be able to get the best out of it. So, so one thing that is very hard when you're playing with renewable energy is the stability of the energy that you produce. Wind is not always the same. Sunlight is not always the same. So when you have states where you have the most wind power or a lot more solar power, you can diversify your business model and focus on each state's trend, which is exactly what Excel Energy is doing. You see here the um, distribution uh, and the evolution of that company from 2005, where you had more than 50% of energy coming from coal, all the way down to 2030 with the objective of having only 3% of coal and then 67% in renewable energy. So if you want to invest in a company that is moving forward and has a lot of project that is going towards the right direction, Excel Energy will be able to give you that in your portfolio. What I like here is the investment thesis is very strong as the expected returns from management, eight to 10% per shareholder, including a very strong earnings per share growth, some dividend yield on top of that. So you have a combination of a great balance between income and growth potential, and you can find that in Excel Energy. When you look at the Dividend triangle, it's a lot better than Authentica yield. This explains also why the yield is also lower, but you can see revenues going up, earnings going up, dividend is going up and a lot more stable way. Uh, you can again expect mid to high single digit dividend growth moving forward, which is pretty much what you want in your portfolio. Um, I know. I have forgotten a few great renewable stock in this video. I wanted to attract your attention to Atlantica Yield and Excel Energy. I could have talked about Next Era Energy as well, but Next Era is quite popular. I wanted to dig a little bit deeper. And um, you have the video about Algonquin Power. Don't forget to look in the um, link description. And uh, next week, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because next week I'm going to present you what is probably my favorite pure play on renewable energy stock. But this one deserves a complete video. It's part of my portfolio. And this one, you don't want to miss it for sure. So until my next video about the most interesting pure play renewable energy stock next week, don't forget to stay invested.